We use the dome for a lot of reasons. It could be a guest house. It's a room for your teenagers. It could be a work studio. We have people living in the domes. We have clients who've lived in their domes for 30 years. We have domes in the warm Costa Rican climates, all the way in Alaska. Often we sell our domes to university projects who are doing research in the poles. Because of the shape of it, the wind just blows around it. The geometry of the geodesic dome is the geometry that Buckminster Fuller discovered from nature. So this is the magic garden of my dear friends. They love their dome. They use it for a music studio, jam session place, guest house, workspace. And we'll go inside this dome. This is a 20 foot dome. So you have a window. Yeah, this, yeah, each dome come for the shelter domes, we usually have a, a bay window. This is a 20 foot dome and you can actually fit a lot in here. I've seen a 20 foot dome with a little sleeping loft and underneath would be a desk or office. In this dome they just use for a guest room and music, they play music in here a lot. So they've got a bed and some music gear. This is actually an unusual door. So normally you can put a normal pre-hung door here or we have a, a different type of zipper door. They have a wood stove in Oregon. We get some snow once in a while. So you're able to put a wood burning stove into this yeah. material? Well, we have a flashing design, especially for exiting any kind of heat, and that's perfectly safe there. So you wouldn't melt the fabric with the heat there? It's right, it doesn't okay. even get hot. It's okay. completely diffused by the flashing. So this little wood stove heats this up more than needed. Um, it's pretty easy to heat. It's a small space. and. And material's quite insulated? Um, yeah, this insulation, so what you've got here is you've got the outer cover, then you've got the frame. There's a dead air space between the outer cover and the inner cover here. And then you've got this insulated liner. Right now they just have their screen window in, but you can put a double pane window in there. Even people have lived in a dome this size in the same area as here without the liner and lived all winter for years with a little tiny, well, they used a pellet stove, which is very efficient. The original geometry that Bucky used, he extrapolated from the icosahedron. You know what platonic solids are, so all of those platonic solids are found in nature. And he created this whole geometric unfoldment to take that original icosahedron, which is a 20-sided sphere, and turn it into a more rounded thing by adding frequencies, we call it. But if you go from the very top pentagon and you go down to this pentagon here, you see it's a straight line. Or if you go right to the door, that would be a pentagon. And then also, let's see, where's the pentagon here? Here, pentagon. And here is another pentagon right here. So there's five pentagons because the, it's a five-sided structure. So from the very top point to each of these points, that would have just been one straight line, one vertice on the original icosahedron. But to make a rounder structure, we divide that and add triangles all between. So we basically, to get a bigger dome, we go to a higher frequency.
we grew up from grassroots, very grassroots, like necessity is the mother of invention. I made the first dome so that I could give birth to my child because I was living under a tree at the time I was pregnant. I remember putting the dome up and being so happy I got it up before the rains. This tree is like worth showing. This is a sequoia redwood. A matter of fact, when I first started making structures, I was living under a California redwood tree in Santa Cruz. And my first task was to make teepees. So I made a whole bunch of teepees for the farm at the university in Santa Cruz. All the staff members, we lived in a teepee village. That was how I began sewing structures. I moved there in 69. I was a staff member building the organic biodynamic farm along with Rudolf Steiner's main student, Alan Chadwick, who came to the United States to teach everybody biodynamic farming. When I moved to Oregon and decided to start a business making domes for other people, I needed to make money, so I would just sit in my living room while my kids played. I would just sit and sew domes and I could make a dome, a, a house for somebody in a weekend. I felt really amazed, you know, that I could actually do that. Everyone loved him so much they wanted me to make more. And then when I moved here to Oregon, I needed a livelihood. So, yeah. I moved up with a whole group of people, mainly because they wanted to be in Southern Oregon. It's so beautiful and it's like, it was much more communities around and people doing back to land adventures and whatnot. So it was very grassrootsy. So grassrootsy oh, now, that's our little shop. Oh, yeah. Good morning. Thank you for calling Pacific Domes. This is Andrew, how can I help you? Oh, Pacific Domes, this is Taylor, how can I help you? Yeah, but if you have wind, like tornadoes or things like that, that might be something we want to look at. Uh, we also provide engineering as well, too. Hi. Yeah, over here we have our sales and marketing. It's lunch hour, so a lot of people are gone. But yeah, I think it's uh, a little bit of a break time. Yeah, it's quiet. But there's a few people here left. This is all the designs that are produced in our design department. We do a lot of custom work, so it's not like every dome is already figured out. And so what happens is all these different patterns get nested on this table. This is the cutting table. Tony is um, working on cutting out some screens right now. And then over here we have our sewing section. A lot of people are at lunch right now. Those two guys are welding. They're that. welding. <laughs> You yeah. have to explain what welding means. Okay, so, um, yeah, there's, there's other than metal welding, there's fabric welding. And this is a fabric welder, that's a fabric welder. And what it does is it puts out a, a high frequency that melts the fabric together, kind of, in, in a way. It doesn't melt like splooshy melt, but it, it lets it bind. And so you put the fabric under this bar, and the bar comes down, and it makes a uh, weld. So all the seams on the architectural vinyls are welded together. And that material is very stable, actually. You would think vinyl is a bad thing to use, but it's actually a lot less toxic than the cotton domes I used to sew, which are treated with formaldehyde, mildecide, fire retardants, and those powder off and the employees end up breathing it, whereas this is a lot less toxic. We have a bunch of different fabrics on here. This is one we use for our insulated liners. It's a nice polyester, very tight weave. This is our architectural vinyl we use for the shelter domes. So this is our greenhouse vinyl. It works really great for diffusing light to create a greenhouse. What he's working on right here, so this is just a clear vinyl. So this is what we make the large windows out of. And I think we started a fashion with large windows because since we've gotten the domes out with these big windows, pretty much everyone copies us. We've inspired a lot of different companies. In the last maybe five years, maybe 10 years at the most, there's many, many copycat companies that have sprung up all over the world, inspired by our designs. 
And I never had a problem with that. I think it's awesome. Here's a photograph of an astronaut and a dome. And this is on the top of a mountain in Hawaii. So this is a NASA project. And they've had astronauts living in the dome. For many years, they've been doing Mars simulation in this dome. This is a really old board. It just shows some of the jobs we did. I think this was a truck show, and this was a car show in Hong Kong at Repulse Bay. This is a shelter dome. You can sure. see how they even integrate wood into the structure. So yeah, can... this was an easy one. What they did was they just took the floor plan and built and and built it up because the geometry is the same, right? So they just built that up to make to divide the dome. They've got a kitchen back there and a bathroom and a kids kids' bedroom in the loft and their bedrooms in the back. This is also another one near the coast of California. This is actually Sean Hausman's dome. He was a famous architect. He designed and built the LA airport, the figure eight part. Wow. And he chose to live in a dome in, o in the mountains of Ojai, California. One of the reasons why domes were not successful in the 60s is because when you build a wooden structure that big, you have to seal all the seams. And you know, doing the roofing project of sealing each corner and each edge and each side was a real conundrum. People did it because they love domes, but you'll often hear a story of, my dome leaks. And when we solved that by using steel tubing and fabric, but we are considered a temporary structure in regards to that. We are only considered a permanent structure in Hawaii, for instance, where one of our business partners pushed on the permitting because they don't require the insulation in Hawaii that we require. So I could probably push to make it a permanent structure. I just haven't had the bandwidth to go there. And can these domes be plumbed and electrified and everything? Oh yeah. Okay. You can anything you can do. You can plumb through your floor, but we also often use when you have a window opening, instead of a window or a screen, you can just put a solid piece of fabric. If you're plumbing, you can cut a little X in here and put any size tube through. So if you want to vent your bathroom fan or do something, we also have the solar fan that fits right in the same opening. So yeah, we figure out all kinds of stuff. Yeah. What if you wanted to do a look about for a dome? Yeah, um, well, you got to build your deck. We provide the floor plans for free. And according to my clients, anyone can build one of our decks. And then you've got to put the frame up on top of the deck. Right here we have what we call a flat hub. And this is very simplistic. You, the, the punch press cuts this rounded and punches a hole in it. We bend it to the right angle according to the which frequency dome it is and then it just bolts together so it's it's very easy for installation you know like the dome we were in today my son he probably would put that dome up in a day that dome would be up and covered and skinned and liner put in and so and the cost roughly like we're talking range for a, just a well, backyard simple like the dome you saw the 20 foot today i think those are about six thousand right now to seven thousand with the liner, it would be a little more. And if you live in a heavy snow area, there's a little upgrade required for heavier snow loads. So we have, I can show you in here. So we have different size tubing. I started actually when I, my first domes were even smaller. I used to have a half inch pipe hanging right here. And when I first made domes, I used half inch tubing. It was plenty strong, handled the snow in Oregon. But we got an engineer after we grew into a business, and now we have to be more specific about what we use, the tubing. And plus, the quality of the tubing is different. Forty years ago, it was much stronger steel tubing than it is right now. So um, this is our normal. We call it one inch. Um, and this is our next size and this size. And when we get into the bigger domes, you know, when you're talking about putting up a 120 foot diameter dome, we would use a, a longer strut length, as much as nine feet, because it's stronger, makes the length stronger. So yeah, it just depends what you're making. This is what we make our bay window out of. 
this is what we make the bay window and the round this is actually a round window so we put a bunch of these in each shelter dome you can take them out and put screens in instead you can also put we have a solar fan so it will exhaust the hot air out in the same opening or you can put your wood stove flashing which you saw and this material is really interesting when we make our insulated liners we either use this which is thinsulate and it's basically like what you would use to make an insulated jacket so we buy this in bulk to make these really elegant liners as you saw today so because of the stable structure of the geometry we can supply domes for places that other structures won't survive wind snow We've had our domes make it through hurricanes. It reported back to us like everything blew over but the dome. It's the geometry of, of nature. Do you find that there's a connection, more of a connection with nature with the dome structure? Yeah, absolutely. Our experience over the many years of putting domes up People will walk in the dome and go, ah.